Yeah, hi everybody. Thanks very much for um, for listening. What a couple of great presentations we've had already this morning. So um, I will um, just I wanted what I wanted to talk to you to, about today was about just listening to customers, I guess, um, from Syngenta's point of view. Oh, hang on, my screen doesn't seem to be moving, so I will. Yeah, my name is Daniel Life. I'm the business manager at Syngenta and I'm responsible for professional pest management. I didn't come into this from a professional pest management background. So I started at Syngenta about six years ago and I was asked to kind of look after and take over the business. And my background is in turf grass management. I did my postgrad in, in, in soil biology. So it was kind of a new area for me. And we had a small range of products um, and we had an exclusive relationship with Killgerm and no UK based stuff. So when I took over the business, it was about how we made it relevant and, and how we went about kind of really driving it forward. And I just thought it would be good to give a bit of an insight into how that worked. So at Pest Tech, uh, no, Pest X, a couple of years ago, we did a bit of a survey and we asked um, a lot of pest controllers if they knew about Syngenta. And actually, most people, when I first started in 2015, didn't even know who Syngenta were. In the Middle East, where we have a bigger business, then for sure you can see on the stats here, there was a lot of people. But at Pestex in the UK, so pest controllers with small businesses, only 32% knew who we were. In the middle size, 14% knew who we were, and maybe some of the larger companies. But overall, not even 50% of the people knew anything about Syngenta. So we were starting from a really low base. And so that was my um, kind of, you know, I had to really think about how, how we communicate that. So I think it's really important when we looked at building the Syngenta business to support pest controllers that we actually speak to pest controllers. That's the most important thing. So at Pestex, we also spent some time to really kind of um, interview pest controllers, find out about what their challenges are, find out about what, what their issues are. And these are some of the results from what we found. So one of the challenges was legislation. Everybody felt that legislation was really, really important, uh, making sure people are compliant, record keeping is correct, non-tox is becoming much more of an issue. And we had some quotes from some of the pest controllers. So worried about changing legislation and risks of not complying. Protocols and audits, um, that was another challenge that came through from the hundreds of people that we spoke to, especially maybe around supermarkets. And also, you know, as everybody probably even finds now, time. Time is a real issue. So um, paperwork needing to be filled in, um, the way that you work is different. So time was a big issue. And also, Educating the client, I think that comes through almost every day working in pest control that, you know, it's important to make sure the client education is, is you know, optimised as best as you can. And also, there's a real belief that maybe the clients don't see the pest controller's profession, uh, profession as, you know, a real professional institution. And so, therefore, that was a real issue that I don't think that pest controllers a lot of things didn't felt they were taken seriously or felt that they were taken you know respected at the level they should do and i think that was really important to look at and also an issue of resistance and resistance you know in, in rats has been something we've talked about especially at crew a lot recently so we really took some time to understand the challenges of pest controllers so we could kind of build the business and, and see what we had to do and then we also kind of wanted to have a bit of an understanding of what people used and what people did and this formed a real first part of the strategy. So you can see here from the study that um, all, if you took the look at the, um, on the left here, you can see that 34% of pest controllers used a grain-based product, 33% used blocks, 15% used pastes and gels, um, and then pasta, and then obviously foam and pellets. Whereas we sell our uh, talon pellets a lot in, in Europe, um, in the UK, pellets are not really used very much and foam maybe with products like Racumin that are for kind of niche operations. So it was a really good opportunity to understand, you know, what the challenges are for the pest controller and then kind of what they did and, and also where, what we had and where that fitted. And that was a real problem for us because, as you can see in this slide, 
the products that we started to do, if we had talon wax blocks, which I think man, you know, many of you might be familiar with, previously called Clearat, and a few years ago that, that brand changed, so some of you might remember it as Clearat wax blocks, but it's uh, talon. We had talon soft, which is a, a lot of you know is a you know, really good product, and we had talon pellets. So this is what we had, uh, as well as the Advium range, we had Advium cockroach and ant, but from a rodenticide point of view, very little. So understanding that we have a, um, a block product, we had a, a paste product, we had a pellet product, but we still didn't really have all the things that the customer needed. Because if you look at the, the chart that we put on the right, then there was a grain product that was missing and definitely a pasta product that was missing. So we had a lot of things to do. We had to improve our communication. We had to improve the way that we support pest controllers and maybe fix some of their issues, such as time or, or information. We also wanted to see if we can make it more professional. And also we needed to kind of provide all the products. So that was my challenge when I took over the business and hopefully we can kind of show you how we've done that. But I think it's important that, you know, you can see that it was done looking at the customer first and really understanding the customer and understanding what the challenges of the pest controller wants and then delivering it rather than saying, oh, well, this is you know, really what you should have. So first off, what we did was we um, developed a, um, yeah, a grain formulation, which is what we didn't have. And so we launched Talon M a couple of years ago now, and this has been really successful. And it was a maize-based product, so hence the M. And so that really fitted because a lot of the current products on the market were wheat-based, so the maize-based one we could do, which was very good for rural locations. So that was a really interesting project for us and hopefully fitted a gap where we didn't have anything to be able to support pest controllers in that area. And then we launched recently, uh, this November, Talon Glow, which um, hopefully the kind of uh, GIF is working and zooming across the screen. And uh, it was a lot of fun developing the, uh, the artwork and the kind of um, communications around this. But here we had, uh, we wanted a product that was as close to Talon Soft as we could get it. But those formulation um, restrictions meant that, you know, you can't get it exactly like that. There's a lot of oil in it and it didn't really work very well within the sachet, but we got it as, as close as we could. So we worked really hard to understand what the customer wanted and then and then put the products in place that you know, hopefully the pest controller has a portfolio as best as they can. So Talon Glow as a product is a, a 15 gram single dose sachet for rat and mice control, formulated with food and uh, grade ingredients and an attractive pasta plate formulation. For me, one of the interesting things is you've got these kind of seeds inside and we had a lot of report in the field that that's been particularly kind of uh, what they've been after. And it's been um, you know, a lot of interest in that from some kind of anecdotal look in the market. So that's been really good. And most importantly, it was the fluorescent technology. Um, Talon Glow was actually named by pest controllers. So what we did at the last uh, PPC Live, we, which was the last before lockdown, was what we did was we had a variety of names for this kind of product. And then we asked all the pest controllers at PPC Live and said, what do you think it should be called? We gave a bit of an overview of the product and therefore what we were able to do was take the name that all the pest controllers thought was best, and that's what we called it. So it was Talon Glow was the actual winner. So it was really nice that it was actually named by pest controllers at, at, at the event. So that was good. So we're able to deliver both of those. But also beyond that, I think that there was a lot of discussion, as you remember, about kind of uh, compliance and risk. And it, I felt it was really important that Syngenta's portfolio was very much based around Bradificum. Um, fantastic active ingredient, but we all know that, you know, when uh, I think Matt was talking about risk assessments earlier, it's really, really important to make sure that we have enough products to enable the pest controllers to go to the right location, make the right assessment, and then use the right product. And Bradificum doesn't work in every situation. It's not the perfect solution in every situation, for sure. And we understand that and, and see that. So, what we wanted to do, we developed uh, an alpha chlorolose formulation that would enable opportunities where pest controllers wanted to do something different, where they needed quick knockdown or they needed a different approach, and this was a better for us. So we can really expand the portfolio to maybe support other areas. 
So Rhythmus Alpha, which some of you might have known, uh, seen about, it only launched at the beginning of this year, um, very much like Talon Soft in its uh, formulation, uh, pretty much as close to that. But the major difference is that there's quite a lot more of the active ingredient. You can see 3.996% weight by weight rather than obviously the 50 ppm products that you get in Talon Soft. So there's a lot more active ingredient here um, due to the way that it worked, but it's supplied in the same kind of tube. So it's designed here to gain fast um, control of mouse infestations and really only used as a knockdown infestation, not as a long-term baiting solution. So it's very much for specific use and then maybe change over to something else. The formulation, as I said, like Talon Soft, very palatable. So um, and the way that it, the way that it works is it's very quick and drops the body temperature really fast of the mouse and then causes hypothermia and, and ultimately death. So and it takes oh, less than half a gram for it to work. So really good opportunity in that in that um, environment. So really good, good chance to do that. We did run some trials because one of the big issues around it was temperature and whether it would work at higher temperatures. We have run some trials and it doesn't seem to be consistent. So it does work at much better higher temperatures. So I think it's definitely worth looking into that if you have some areas uh, that you might need. But I think what's important is that it's, again, looking at the risk assessment, the right strategy. So Rhythmus Alpha first, and then maybe then move over to Talon as a long-term or baiting strategy. So making sure you pick the right element and the right place for it. But what I really think, I didn't want to come on here and just kind of talk about products. It was really talking about how we've developed the products to fit what the customer needs. And I think for me, what we can see is digital pest control is becoming more and more important. And we think that it's really important to make sure that we can support this. Um, I think if someone said to me digital pest control five years ago, I probably wouldn't really have understood what they were talking about. I think it's a very difficult thing to kind of comprehend. But as we're moving forward, it really is about trying to find digital solutions that are be able to complement what you need. So we did launch a couple of years ago, the Syngenta Pest App. I was going to do a demo of it, but I thought it might be a bit risky. So uh, I'll just talk it through. But if you download, go onto um, App Store or Google Play, you can download the Syngenta Pest app. And in the next couple of weeks, we're launching version two, which is a massive upgrade. So you, on it, you'll find the products. You'll find all the MSDSs, all the labels. So if you ever need to go in and you just want to quickly look at a label, all of the labels and MSDSs are on there. You can also email them to yourself. You can share them, send them, save them. And then also, if you click on the pests, that's an issue, then what you can also do is that then it will tell you the products for those particular pests. It has a mix in an application calculator, so you can go in and put in your um, area, what product you want to use, what the infestation is like, and it will absolutely tell you um, how much of each product you need to use. So we can make sure that people use as, as little as possible to do the job. It has loads of videos on it, which will, so the current one has all this, um, but there's some upgrades for, for the new one. The, there's, there's loads of videos, training videos. We're going to work harder to put more and more videos on there. Obviously, it's got all the contacts. But most importantly, and the newer version is going to have a really upgraded version, is we have put all of the treatment reports on there. So in the new version, you'll be able to go in and put the treatment report in. You'll be able to take a picture. You'll be able to add images. You'll be able to write report notes. You'll be able to do every treatment report from your phone. You can add in images of the issues. You can add images of the site. You can add your company logo. You can um, you can put all of the details on it. And then from your phone, you can save it as a PDF, save it to your phone, and then email it directly to the client. And it's all like Apple with the drop-down menus. So ultimately, that makes it really, really easy for you to use. You can have an immediate treatment report, send it straight to your email to your customer if, yeah, before you've even left the site. So... That the version is currently out at the moment, but there will be a new version and we will launch it in a couple of weeks. So that's great. On top of that, today, actually, I think, but I wouldn't look at it yet. I'd give it a couple of weeks. We've just launched a new website that is dedicated and focused to pest controllers in the UK. So historically, when I took over the business, we had a European strategy and all of the MSDS and, and uh, information was in Europe. 
So it wasn't really great for pest controllers needing to find out UK-based uh, information. So we've worked really hard over the last few years to really kind of develop a um, Syngenta website and strategy for the UK. And so the new website launched yesterday and we're going to spend a couple of weeks just making sure everything's right and everything's updated. And then we can continue to build it and build it and build it and put more information on. So all the products will be on there, all the MSDSs, all the labels, resources, all the contact information you need. But we're going to start to use it now to build news, blogs and loads of information that's really going to be useful to pest controllers. You know, Syngenta is very much invested in making sure that the pest controllers have got exactly the information they need and everything to hand. So the app should make it really easy, but also the website's there. Finally, now I don't know if this is going to work. I'm going to try. <laughs> I'm going to try. So I don't, some of you, obviously a lot of you hopefully came to Pest Extra and had a chance to have a look around the Syngenta booth. And what I wanted to give it a quick look around it and see if I can show you what we are doing. So hopefully this shares the screen. But what what we really wanted to do, we wanted to put all the information in the booth at, at the, and this will be live on the website. So you can feel free to go and have another look around. You can have a have a look at it if you need. But I'm just going to see if I can dive in and have a look at the. Hopefully this is still sharing my screen. Um, it just takes a little while to load, but we will just see if this works. So if any of you want to go and have a look, please feel free to click on the link uh, and have another look around because all of the information should be on there. The lights are off at the moment, but hopefully that's still that's still working. And it just takes a couple of seconds and then it should come through. Come on, come on. Oh. I can move, just need the lights to come on. So, um, yeah, what I wanted to do is kind of, uh, here we go, we're in. So hopefully you can see, this is the Syngenta boost that we did for um, Pest Extra. And you should be able to have a look around the booth. So all the products are in here. And hopefully it's not lagging too much on your side. But we did try and put all of the information in here to have a look around. So you've got Talon Glow here on the right. And if you, you can click around and move around the site and wander around and, and have a look. And all of the videos should play on here on the screen. And if you want to then grab the brochure, you can grab the brochure and all of the brochures then download so they're all available. So um, all the information around the Talon Glow, you can go upstairs and have a look at the rest of the Talon products in there. We've got Rhythmus Alpha over here. And it was just a really, what we wanted to do was create a really nice experience for people. And we're going to leave this up for the next couple of weeks for people to go around and, and have a look. The new Pest app will be updated when it's over there with all the QR codes to log in and have a look. And also, um, Outcast and which was another product that we launched last year. Um, all the information is available and all the Advian information is available at the top. So ultimately, you know, I think it's a great experience for us and a great way for us to show people about what we did and what the products are and really just introduce people to Syngenta. So for me, that's pretty much it. I, I, it's a sponsors section. So I just wanted to kind of give you a bit of an overview of Syngenta, who we are and what we're trying to do. We want to really understand the needs of the customer and we really want to find out about pest controllers and therefore grow the business, really understanding what you need and trying to make really good decisions about, about what we do that really benefits pest controllers. So very much the right products but also definitely about creating future digital platforms. We are currently working on a digital monitoring system that hopefully we're going to launch at the end of the year. And we're really excited about that as well. But um, we're going to continue to invest in uh, professional products. It's really difficult to bring new registrations to market. A new active ingredient costs about 300 million to develop. 
And so therefore, you need global strategies to be able to do that. So it, it is very difficult. But please have a look on the new website when you get a chance. Download the new app when you get a chance. If you want to go and have a look around our kind of um, virtual world, please, please do that. And uh, yeah, look, we're really going to work hard to make sure for pest controllers going forward that, you know, Syngenta you know, provides all the opportunities and all the products that you need. So I appreciate that today. Thanks for everybody for listening. And we're really proud to be a sponsor. We've got a great relationship with the BPCA and uh, we have been do more and more with them all the time. So yeah, hope you enjoyed the talk and yeah, enjoy the rest of the event. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you, Daniel. That was a, that was amazing. Um, yeah, like you said, the pest extra went well, and that's a great stand that you've got there as well for people to have a have a look around. And a few people mentioned in the chat that they've downloaded your app already. So that's good news. Um, I was actually just trying to, I've got my password to allow it, but I'll sort that out in a minute. It's fine. Yeah, the app, the app currently is the old, is the first version. So it's basically, but then in the next couple of weeks, you should get a lot, uh, an update or whatever for, for the new one, which is like got an, all the kind of really new features. So it's a global launch. So we've got to launch it in every country at the same time. So it's a bit tricky, but yeah, hopefully, uh, yeah, see what it's got now. But then, yeah, keep an eye about over the next couple of weeks. So. Great, great. Um, so we have eight questions here. We've got a nice amount of time to get through I them. Mean, so I'll, I'll read them out for you and then you can you can just spend your time thinking about um, uh, a good answer. So Martin here says, is Talon Glow available as a dummy block as well as for test baiting? It isn't, but it isn't. There's nothing to say that we can't do that. If there's demand, then yeah, for sure, we we can look at that. I think it very much depends. You know, um, if people say that that's what they would like, and we find out from pest controllers that's, that's what they're after. We brought out Talon Track, which um, I didn't mention in here, which is what we try to fit with Talon Soft, so that then there's a monitoring that fits with Talon Soft. But if there is demand, yeah, then please get in touch at Syngenta. And we're happy to look at it, but for, for sure. Um, yeah, nothing's Great. off the table regarding that. It's just, uh, yeah, just understanding the demand, really, for sure. Mm. Great. And someone else asked about Talon Glow, um, what the LD50 is per, per Sashi. I'm guessing they can see that on the MSDS. But yeah, do you, do you know? Is. Um, I don't know off the top of my head, but I'll put it in the chat during the conversation, and then everybody's got that. So I'm guessing they have got the app. Zoom in there, so... Great. If they got the app downloaded, they'll be able to get that safety data sheet up and they'll be able to find uh, it. They have to be doing my job for me. Perfect. Yeah. So it should be, uh, should be able to, to see that in there. Get that app downloaded. Let's do it. Let's do it. Um, Andy Collier. So can you use an adaptive DSLR to capture the UV trail, etc.? And in brackets, full spectrum conversion, removing the UV transmitting band pass filter, etc. Oh, that was a long sentence. Sorry. You might need um, to read that one again. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what? Let me, I'll leave out the bracket bit and i'll just ask a question so can you use an adapted dslr to capture the uv trail or is there a simple phone app to do this with i, d I don't know actually it'd be good to see we haven't checked it um obviously we just gave away the the torches uh for uv with the initial launch of the product but um if you can use some of those kind of phone things that uh that might be a really good thing i haven't seen that but uh yeah if anyone I'll put my email in the chat and then if anybody wants to have a chat further about it or they think they've got some ideas around that, then um, send me an email and we can, we can work through that. Happy to look at it. Yeah, for sure. We haven't done that yet, but it mm -hmm. doesn't, I think it'd be a really good idea. So um, yeah, I mean, yeah. like you said at the end there, you're, you're looking for people to tell you what they want and, you know, companies say what they want. For, for sure. And I think that's a really important point that if we, it's about understanding the customer and then finding out and without forums like this, it's quite difficult to do that all the time. So yeah, it's a great idea. So yeah, for sure, we'll look, we'll look at it. Great. Um, so Nick here asks, how long would you recommend leaving Rhythmus down for, for a fast knockdown? How many days or weeks? I'm not, I'm not a technical person. So um, again, I'll just, I'll go back. I'm the commercial manager, so I'll go back, but it's diff it's difficult to say. I, I, um, but I don't think you want to leave it down too long. I'm not sure in terms of in terms of actually it being palatable. It does last quite a long time, but uh, mm -hmm. I'm not. I couldn't be exact on exact time, but I can get back to the tech manager during the call, and then I can put something on the chat just to yeah, make good stuff. Rather good than putting stuff. something that's not correct, I'll just double check it and, and go back. Mm -hmm. 
great. And they can always, um, that's some great CPD for them as well to go and have a look at the label and, you know, the associated information with that product so they can, yeah, sure. you know, help learn it. But yeah. But also nice. reach out to the distributors that you that you buy from. It's, you know, that we, we do do work with the, our technical guys work with their technical team. So reach out to them as well. If you need. Great. Um, Ian asks, is, is the um, app free of charge? Is there a cost to using the app? No, absolutely no cost whatsoever. It's all free, completely free, and uh, the details are, are your own. So, uh, yeah, it's completely free. It's just trying to create the right service to make sure that you've got good access to the Syngenta information that you need ready to hand. Because sometimes we get a lot of people phone up, and mainly most people, if you look at our website analytics, most people go on there for the MSDS and the label. Pretty much. Mm-hmm. And so to have them just in your pocket then makes it just a bit easier. So, yeah, totally free. Mm-hmm. No charge at all. Well, that's good to hear as well that, you know, a lot of your activity is, you know, from, from BBCA's point of view and professionalism and people knowing what they're using. It's great to hear that you get a lot of that activity. I think that's one of the important things. It's about trying to create the right platform for support to make sure that the products, you can use them in the best way, best way possible. So, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, no, no, it's t- it's really, and it's one of the advantages of being a global company, I guess. So we've been able to launch the app. If we did it just in the UK, it would be really difficult to have enough money to pay for the app to develop it just for the UK market. But as a global company, you can develop a global strategy and then make and adapt it to the UK so we can do things over and above what we would normally be able to do. Like the mm-hmm. like that website, I, I, I dare think how much it cost, but... Yeah, because it's part of a global strategy, we you can do that. And that's one of the nice things about being able to do that. So I think one of my jobs in the UK was to kind of find out what we were able to do and bring it to the UK and try and do that. So it's been good. Mm-hmm. I mean, and talking about the international uh, side of things, someone's asked here, are the products licensed in Ireland? Sorry? Uh, so uh, Ian here has asked, um, is the product licensed in Ireland? I think he might be referring to the Talon, uh, the glue one. I'm not. I'm not sure. Depends. Yeah, is. Ireland's going to be really, really difficult actually from a, for all sorts of things going forward. Um, we're already starting to see registrations diverge with, because of the way that the new biocide BPR regulations are going to be set up. It's going to be really it, the Ireland and Northern Ireland situation for everybody is going to be really, really difficult. In terms of making sure there's the we're going to have different products. In the past, the products and the portfolio and everything of the support used to be UK and Ireland. It all mm-hmm. used to be kind of tied up. But I think going forward now, you're going to have two very separate. You're going to see different products in different countries. We just launched a product last week in a different business. It's mm-hmm. different for Ireland and it, it's, it's different for the UK. So I think that's going to be a real challenge going forward. And also for Ireland, having enough business case to do anything to do it because it's much smaller so um and the uk is going to be challenging as well we, we had an interesting meeting here yeah, with the bpca yesterday talking about all these challenges with the um the manufacturers about the difference in the countries and how we're going to do that it's going to be i watch this space going forward it's going to be very interesting to see how that that pans out yeah no, absolutely seen that seen that myself popping up um Okay, another question. So, Charlie Jones, so bait travel is a concern, and so I often like to use paste in boxes. Have you encountered much pasta bait travel into the environment? No, it's very, look, it, one of the things is it's fairly new, especially with the pasta bait, it's fairly new product for us, and we're just starting to get the first bit of customer feedback, so we haven't really had any any yet. We welcome any customer feedback, absolutely. So if you have got some feedback about good and bad, then, then send me an email and, and do that. So uh, I think that's one of the real challenges as a company like ours is to, because we sell it to Kill German one EMV and then they sell it to the customer. And then I think the manufacturers are a little bit further back from the market. And so therefore we probably don't get that first-hand advice. We don't have a team in the field. So I think that's one of the challenges for us. So yeah, please feel free to kind of, you know, send stuff in or, or do that and communicate mm-hmm. to us through that. Because I think it helps us then, bring the products forward but yeah it's one of the challenges for sure yeah lots of challenges um uh, nigel white here um asks can a redenticide have a generic id place so that it would be able to show if it was sold commercially or domestically this way we would be able to show crew how responsible pest professionals are in, in terms of the actual product or the labeling 
Yeah, I think yeah, I think the the individual the 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 products themselves um, a genetic ID. Sorry, I think I might have said that wrong. So, can the Rodenzas have a genetic ID? It was really in there. Yesterday, I had an insurer phone me up and ask mm. about a product that had been decanted into another pot, and then someone had walked it into their gar- into their carpet, and they were kind of claiming for a new carpet. <laughs> And did I know the product? Did I know what it was? How it says Advian on it somewhere? And it is really, really difficult. Um, mm. Obviously, we try. We one of the things we do do a lot is have to look at. We can check our own active ingredient formulation based on. So we get a lot of counterfeit claims, or we get generic claims of products that aren't ours, especially on Amazon and eBay and various things like that. So we can check if the pro if the formulation is syngentas but we mm. wouldn't have it we would or we haven't at the moment have got different formulations for different markets but if we did have if we mm. had a domestic product and a mm. uh, uh, p- professional product you could potentially you would know the difference in the formulation if you checked it i think that mm. would be the only thing that we could do but you are able to do that so you can we can regularly send product for analysis and we know because it's not just the active ingredient. That's like the tiniest, tiniest part. You've got all the different parts of the formulation, up to maybe sometimes 200 different ingredients. So we're able to understand the chemical makeup of our formulation and then be able to check that for sure. But I don't know how you would do that at a customer level, but mm. the customers, if the customers are concerned in any way that a product's gone down and they or they don't think it's a Syngenta product, but it says Syngenta or something like that, they could send it to us and we could analyze it and check whether um, whether the chemical formulation was exactly ours or not. It, and in that case, it has got its own DNA, I guess. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I've got somebody asking whether you do anything for Pharaoh's ants. Um, we, Advian's not great on that. I'll be honest. It's like if we look at the whole thing, it that's the, probably the question we get asked most, and it, it's okay, but it probably isn't at the same level as it is for uh, black ants or whatever it is. It's a, it's we've got a ideas meeting tomorrow for our global team, and it always comes up. And so we're currently working on it. We're currently looking for something that's more optimized um, because it's a, a you know a global issue. So we are working on it, but we don't have anything immediately. Excellent, excellent. All right, if we've got time for one more question, we need to choose one. Okay, so um, I think actually there's some comments. I'll just read them out. So Martin says, um, ants have just started to appear over the last few days in North Lincolnshire, um, and also uh, saying that it's important to use the same test bait as actual active ingredient. I mean, any comment on, on that? Or It's important to... It's important to use the same test bait as actual active intended i'm not sure yeah martin i think the uh the wording of that is a bit confusing so martin, one, one thing we did do we we sell the ant gel exclusively with kill germ and if you haven't used it before we did do something with with kill germ and we i did say to them if any person hasn't used Advian and ant before and would like to give it a trial we do we do support a trial scheme through kill germ um, they hate me saying this, especially to 150 people, but they, we, if you haven't ever used it before and you would like to give it a go because the active ingredient is quite unique in terms of the bioactivation, the way it works. Um, mm-hmm. You do a, a, a program with Kill Germ where um, you can get a trial sample if you if you want to. So, um, yeah, mm-hmm. if people are interested in trying it, then, yeah, get in touch with Kill Germ or, or myself and we can sort something out. Great. Fantastic. Thank you, Daniel. That was um, that was amazing. I think there's any um, specific questions left over. There was a, um, something about Talon Soft and someone asking about the authorization and why it's held by Rentacle. Is that anything you can want to comment on or, or not? Too much? No, no it's, um, it's our active ingredient. Sometimes that we we work with other companies to improve the formulation, or they've got uh, we work in partnership to, to do things. So in that particular case, we just on on a part of the formulation, we we worked in partnership with them to develop it just to make it a bit more palatable. So that's why they're, they're, yeah, yeah, fantastic. So, uh, yeah, I, uh, it's you're seeing more collaboration now in the industry with companies mm-hmm. having to work together because there's more global issues. So we we do have a we do do where the right opportunity is just to make things better we can set up some partnerships to just optimize it really so you'll you'll see that um but yeah across across the industry 
Great. We're perfectly on time, Daniel. Thank you so much for that. That was really involved. There's no questions left outstanding. So we managed God to get through them. <laughs> so, it's a great, yeah. No, <laughs> it's a brilliant. Great, great answer. Really appreciate it. And it's great to have all the questions. And I, yeah, I'll put I'll put the uh, the LD50 and my email on the bottom. So if anybody wants to get in touch, they can. Great. And if there's any questions that someone was typing away and we've just said it sort of ended now, they can put it in the chat. You can keep an eye on it and, and, and get in chat to them there if you want to. It's great. No, brilliant. Thanks very much.